Hi friends, it's Becky. And the other day we made some earrings using some super duos and gem duos and some seed beads with some of the beads that came in the uh, April Beads of the Month from Adornable Elements. So we made some of those and then I made some earrings with them and I told you that we'd also figure out how to do this as a necklace. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. One would be to follow the same instructions that I showed you in the last video, including adding a wire guardian here to the top and instead of putting it on an ear wire, just put it on a jump ring and then use it as a pendant or as a focal in a necklace design, whether you're stringing it or, or, or however you're doing that. Another way is to do a ladder stitch bail, and I'm going to show you that with this example. I actually made this with some uh, super duos and gem duos that were in my stash. And it's just kind of to show you what it looks like to do a different color. Um, lots of other colors are coming to mind to do besides yellow and white, like maybe pink or blue or purple. Um, actually any color that, that flowers are, you could do with that. So I'm going to be demonstrating that with this. And then after I demonstrate the ladder stitch bail, I'm going to show you how to attach a beaded daisy chain directly to your focal and how we're going to start it, how we're going to finish that. I've already done one, one of the, the ends of the necklace, like this. And so when I'm done with the bail on this one, we'll pull this one out and I'll show you how to start with that. For this one, um, I did show you in the last video and I am going to link to that video in the description below. So if you want to see how to make this part, definitely go watch that. Um, because this part is just going to be how to turn this once you've made it into a necklace. So yeah, I showed you how to go through and just add three seed beads between each point to kind of reinforce it. And so that's what I'm using for this part of my necklace. So for this one though, let me move that. Um, it's just a wire guardian because I'm going to be using it for the rest of that. So let me show you how you can use some seed beads. These are 11 seed beads and I'm just going to use this one color to do that and just make a ladder stitch bail to hold this on and then you can string it on anything that way. You don't need a lot of thread for this. This is just some leftover thread from another project. Um, in fact, I just never took it off the the needle because I was like, hey, that's going to be enough for this. Uh, an arm's length or even half an arm's length should be sufficient for that. I'm just going to leave a couple of inches here on the end of a stop bead that is also going to be part of this bale. So I'm going to just go back up through. This is the, it was going this way and I'm making a big circle around it just to stop that bead from going through when I sew through here. And I'm just going to sew right through one of these super duos. You could do this at the top of the gem duos too if you wanted, but I think it'll look better coming out of the super duo. So I've got that one there. And then I'm going to pick up four 11 O's. One, two, three, four. So I've got my, my stop bead and then I went through the super duo and I've picked up four of these. I'm going to scooch this down to the bottom like that. And then I'm going to go through this same first bead that I went through, the super duo, and this one, if I can get my, there we go. The first one that I just picked up just now. So not through those three, because I want those three to lay down over the top of that. All right, so now I'm going to go up through those three, or down through those three, again. 
And this is just ladder stitch. It's just doing rows of three seed beads, one after another. So I'm gonna pick up another three seed beads, one, two, three, like this. And I want those three seed beads to lay on top of these three that I just went through. So I'm gonna go through those three seed beads again And now I've got those three. I'm gonna go back through those three that I just added. It's kind of like repetitive loops around and each time you add three more beads and that's how you do your ladder stitch. I'm gonna do another three seed beads and I'm coming out of this side. So I'm gonna go into the opposite side Like that and then just right up into that next row of seed beads coming out the other side you can hold on to it and give it a little tug to help it snug up and that's just going to make a ladder stitch bale like this let's do a couple more I don't think I'm gonna need to uh, go back and and come or go away and come back because it's not going to take that long for us to get enough seed beads to curve back on itself to bend back and form it into a bale. It's not enough yet. That's just one, two, three, four rows, not including the one that includes the super duo. So I just added these. I'm going to go through them again. I like to kind of pinch them in place, give it just a little tug. One, two, three. Go through from the opposite side. And then one, two, three. All right, now that is, how many rows is that? One, two, three, four, five. I think that might be enough. It depends on what you're going to be stringing it onto. This would be enough for most pieces of leather, unless you have a really thick piece of leather. Um, if you were gonna string it onto some silver silk or something, you might want that to be a little bit bigger. And in fact, I think I may, because I have some really great, gorgeous green and white silver silk, and I think that this would look really great on it. So I'm going to do two more rows. This would be a good place to stop if you're just going to be stringing it on like some wire or something else like that. But because I want this to fit around some silver silk, or if you wanted to do a thicker piece of leather, you could continue this. So I'm just gonna do two more rows, picking up my three 11 O's, going through my previous row, reinforcing the row I just added, and then picking up another three seed beads. All right, now this I think is gonna be big enough that I can string it on that silver silk. And uh, I will I will do a whole, a whole video with that later. All right, so now that I've got that done, now I can want, I bend it back. And I'm just going to go through this same part where I had attached it before. I'm coming out of this end of the seed beads. So if I'm looking at it, this is the bottom and this is the top, I'm coming out of the top. So I'm going to want to go into the top of those seed beads there, the first ones I added, and I wanna go through that seed bead, the super duo, and this first, this other seed bead. Let me see if I can go through all of them at once. If not, I can go through just these two and then go through that next one later after I get my thread through. See how that kind of pulls that down next to it? 
Okay, see, I wanted to go through this one. And see how this end of the uh, bale is only attached on this side? I need it to get attached on this side, so I'm going to go back through this guy again. And that's going to attach it to that part of my little seed bead part. Giving it a little bit of a tug. All right, so I'm coming out of here. I'm going to go back through here. And I'm just going to keep going through these beads a couple more times to reinforce this. And I keep missing this one bead because it's just at an awkward angle. And it's probably at an awkward angle because that was that one that I was also using as a stop bead. But that's okay. There we go. One more time through these other beads. Just give it a little tug. Yep, I think that's going to be good enough. And these two strands are right next to each other, so I'm just going to be cheeky. And I'm going to tie these together. Right over left, or left over right, I don't know which one that was. And now the other way around. So with this one, I'm going to just wrap it around there twice. Once, twice. All right. And now I'm going to just go through that bead a little bit with my thread. Ooh. That bead is a little hard to go through. That's okay, I think, because... the tension of the multiple passes of thread will help that hold on better. Okay, so now I can cut that off. And I've got myself a little bale on this that I can use as a pendant. And then I can burn down that little fuzzy bit and let it just slide right off my desk and then pick it up again. <laughs> and there we have it. So that's one way that you can turn this into a pendant and have it be part of a necklace. And I'm pretty sure that will fit on some silver silk. I've got some extra capture chains sitting over here. Let's see. Ooh, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Look how great that looks. I'm kind of in love with it. Maybe I'll just do it on this. No, I've got some stuff that's green and I think it would look really great with this. So I will save it for the green stuff. But yeah. Just a little ladder stitch bale. All right, let's move on to the daisy chain. All right, so when you're planning this, um, you may want to take into consideration how you're going to be wearing it. Like, this is going to be a fairly short necklace for me, but it's not going to be um, choker length. So choker length, I would attach this side and this side so that this would be right in the middle of my neck if it was a choker. Since it's going to be hanging below my collarbone or right underneath my collarbone, I'm going to attach over here. If I was going to do it like uh, as a really, really long necklace, I might attach both sides or even longer, I'd attach both ends to here and here. So this end is going to be the best end for me to attach for the length that this is going to be for me. So short means it's gonna be just, just below my collarbone and I'm gonna have it hanging here. 
That way, the beaded, I guess, beaded chain, the, the daisy chain, it doesn't have to be at an odd or weird angle when it's being worn. If <laughs> it was a very long one and the, the strands would be more straight up and down, then having them be closer together would be better for it. It's just, you know, where it's joined, it's going to be very securely attached, but it might put some strain on it after repeated wear. And that's another reason why you'd want to have it here for choker length, but mine's going to be shorter, but not choker length. So I'm going to move it up here for the next one. And that's just something to take into account for this. So for the daisy chain, I have three different seed beads that I'm going to be using. I have my petal color, which is this light buttery um, seed bead color that we had in that um, in that subscription shipment. And then I'm using the same seed beads that I went around the outside edges and then I filled in this part with for my leaf color and that's what I'm going to be referring to as we're going to have our center color, our leaf color, and our petal color. Um, that way if you wanted to do a daisy chain that had multiple colors then you would just be worrying about petal color and not whether it's green or blue or purple or yellow or white when I am talking you through it. Um, and a lot of you may already be very familiar with doing daisy chains. I think they're super fun um, to do. And I'm gonna be using an eight petal daisy chain and then we're gonna do a diamond shape in between them with our leaf color. And I'll show you how we make that diamond shape when we get to it. All right, let me get some more thread on this needle. For this, I am using 0 0.006 inch or six pound fire line. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off a full wing span of this. I'm gonna hold one end of the thread and stretch my hands out with my spool in the other hand until my arms are spread apart as much as I love you. <laughs> so that's, that's how we're gonna do that. And now we've got our guy here. Where's a? I'm just gonna smush the end here because it makes it a little bit easier to thread it onto a needle. And I know the rule is never thread a needle on camera. You can do this with a wide eye beading needle. I actually really love using wide eye beading needles but this is the needle that I currently have right here next to me. So that's the one we're gonna be using. And I don't know the needle size. Could be an 11, could be... We're not going through any really tiny beads. So I think this will be good with any size beading needle. As long as you can get the thread through the eye. All right. So we're gonna be starting it sort of in a similar way as the other. I'm going to pick up one leaf color bead and drop it down to uh, not quite the end. Give myself a few inches of space here at the bottom. And I'm gonna turn this into a stop bead. We're also going to be using it in the design. So we put, turn it into a stop bead by going through it one more time like that and now I decided to go through this one right okay so I want to go through this bead just right here through this gem duo bring this guy up here go. So he's sitting up there like that. And I'm going to pick up two leaf color beads, one petal color bead, and one leaf color bead like that. So that's four beads total. And I'm going to come around 
and sew through this first bead, the stop bead, the one that we had first put on here, and then go right through my gem duo again. And this should... There we go. Now, I wanted these two beads to sort of pop out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew into this next 11-0. I'm going to skip this one in the corner, sew through this one, skip that one, sew through this one, and then go through the gem duo again. And this is just going to anchor it and just reinforce it one more time before we move on to the rest of that daisy chain. So see, I'm going through just the one bead, not that other one, because I want to skip it. Just that one bead. Let's not move out of the camera shot, Bex. And let's also not get our tail thread caught. Okay, going through there, going through the petal color bead. If you need to move this out of the way so that it pops a little bit better, you can do that. And then I'm going to skip this one here and sew right into this and then into the gem duo. giving it a little tug to help these pop a little bit better and there I like the way that that is sitting so I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna go up through this one seed bead again this one right here the one that's right next to the gem duo and then back into my petal bead and I want to be coming out of my petal bead for the rest of this so that we can progress. All right, so I am doing eight petals in my daisies. So I already have one of those. I need to pick up seven more. So I'm gonna pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you see I'm coming out of this petal bead, the seed bead right here on this side. I'm going to sew into the opposite side, so I'm coming through exactly the same way that I'm already coming through. So we're just making a big circle. There we go. And I'm going to sew back into all of these one more time all the way around. just the petal beads. We're only sewing in through the petal beads. We're ignoring our leaf beads for now, probably for the rest of this one. Back through this. We have several strands of thread going through here. So do what you can. All right, and then back up through the first Four. I can only angle it up through the first three, but you want to get through those first four after this one. So it's one, two, three, four, so that you're coming out of the seed bead on the opposite side of the circle from your original seed bead. So you're right there. Now I'm going to pick up my center color bead and I'm only using one. And I'm coming out of this side of my seed bead, so I'm going to go into that side of the seed bead on the opposite side of that circle. So going from here directly to there without going through any of those other beads on the sides. And 
if I need to shove this over with my finger to pop it into place. I can do that. Why are you? There we go. And now I'm coming out of this seed bead over here on the right. I'm going to go up through my center bead that I just added. Pop it in with my fingernail. And then into the bead on the opposite end, this last petal bead over here on the opposite side from what we were originally coming out of. So I was coming out of it on this side. I went into this one on that side, came out of it on this side, and I'm going into it on this side. And between all of that, we went through our center bead to lock it into place. And now I've got my little daisy. All right. So now I need to add some leaf beads and a petal bead for the next daisy. So I'm going to pick up three leaf color beads. That'll be one of my leaves. And one petal bead for the next daisy. And then three leaf beads. Three green, one yellow, three green. I'm coming out of this side of this last one. So I'm going to go in through the other side just like we did before with the other to make a circle. You're going to say, Becky, you're just making another daisy, aren't you? Well, no, not really, because now I'm going to do some bead skipping. I'm just turning this over because it's easier to see. I'm going to sew into the first green bead, skip the second bead, green bead and then sew into the third green bead like that so that when we pull it taut that bead will pop out and hopefully my thread won't be so tangled this just happens when you have long thread which is one of the reasons why you usually want to not work with more or longer thread than you're comfortable working with so you can always add more thread. I'm just going to take a minute, carefully, unhook that from there. That is getting caught on that. String wrangling. I do, I have a lot of experience with this. I'll be honest. There we go. So it pops that out and turns it into kind of a more of a leaf shape. So I went through that green bead, skipped the second one, and went through the third one. And I'm going to go through my petal bead again. Sorry about that. We'll do this all again so that you don't have um, that little break with me getting my thread caught on things or getting caught up. But I'm going to go through this first in that group of three, the first green bead. Skip the second. You can go through them one at a time if you want. In fact, I'm going to do that because I don't think I'm going to angle that right on camera. So through the first one, skip that second one. You're not going to sew into it. And then sew through the third one. And if you're right there in the neighborhood, go ahead and sew back into that petal bead that we originally were coming out of for this section. And I'm just going to pop that guy out with my needle, just helping it a little bit. And that gives you that diamond shape. All right, so now I'm going to go back through this green bead this green bead and the petal bead, skipping this one on the edge again. And it's a little bit easier the second time, you can see, because they're lined up a little bit better to go through. 
All right, so now I'm coming up out of this petal bead so I can make my flower again. So we make the flower. I'm just going to repeat this one more time, and then I'm going to let y'all catch up with me, and I'm going to work ahead until I get it to the length that I want. So let's go over it again one more time. I've got my first bead for this flower and I want seven petals or, or eight petals total so I need to add seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of my petal beads. And I'm going to go through that and then reinforce this circle one time by sewing through all of the petal beads. I'm going to go all the way around once and then a half. I want to end up coming out of that bead on the opposite end of this flower from the one that I started with. So I'm coming out of that one up there at the top. I'm going to sew back up through here. And these ones were all angled in a way that I can go through all four of them at once. That's very convenient. So now that I'm coming out of that one up here, I can pick up my center bead. Since I'm coming out of this side of this bead, I'm going to go into that side of the bead on the opposite side of my flower. So I'm coming out of that one, skipping those next three beads and going in through that one. And I accidentally picked up two of these, so I'm actually going to stop before I pull that through get rid of one of them because I only want one center bead. Two would be way too many. You don't want to be greedy with your center beads. One is enough. There we go. You see it mostly pops into place but going back up through here kind of cements it and keeps it right there in that place. So I'm going to sew up through this one. And I'm using dark colored thread so y'all can see it better. But if I was to do this not for a tutorial, I would use a thread that's a little uh, harder to see through these beads. <laughs> you can actually see the bead or the thread path through these beads, um, like crystal or maybe a green colorway or something like that. Um, so you might choose a different color of thread, but I think this black thread is perfect for you to be able to follow along and see what I'm doing with it. So again, after I go through that center bead, I'm going to go through the bead here on the end. I was coming out of this side, so I'm going to go into the other side of that bead and get ready to do some leaves. Daisy chains. All right, so for my leaves, I'm going to pick up three leaf beads. That's going to be these green ones for me. One petal bead, because we are going to add our first petal for the next flower while we're doing our leaves. And then three leaf beads. Like that. And I'm going to sew through that one petal bead right there on the end. And now on my way through to reinforce this, I'm going to, in each group of three leaf beads, go through the first leaf bead. Skip the second leaf bead and sew through the first leaf bead or the third leaf bead. And then when I get to the end, I will sew through the petal bead. Now on the other side, I've got another group of three. So I'm going to sew through the first leaf bead, skip the second leaf bead, and sew through the first, or the, sorry, not first, third leaf bead. I'm really good at numbers. I am so good at numbers, guys. And then we're going to go back through <laughs> that one. And I'm going to just pull it taut and help these beads out if they are not moving in the direction I want them to. Just going to stick the needle into the bead and kind of push it to where it should be going. 
because sometimes it doesn't do it on its own and you have to tell it where it needs to go. Remember, you're in charge of your bead weaving. Your beads are not in charge of you. Sometimes it seems like it is. That is not the case. You are in charge of this. And then I'm going to sew up the side, again, skipping that middle leaf bead. Until I am coming up out of this petal bead and I'm ready to make another petal. So I'm going to repeat that if you need to watch these two another time to reinforce it to get that down go right ahead um, if you are ready to continue on you can go ahead and pause me and go continue working on this until you get it to be uh, now for my preferred length this is let me see do I have my uh, I don't have my um, show me hold on okay my bead board is eight inches long and that's exactly exactly how long this is it's eight inches so I made mine eight inches long you could make yours longer you could make them shorter um, check it measure it with, on yourself when it feels like it's gotten to be the right length go ahead and join me back here and I'll show you how we finish that up and get a little wire guardian on the end to attach some hardware. All right, I'll meet you back here. All right, I have finished making my daisy chain up until the very end. I have 23 daisies on each side of my necklace. Um, and that measures, <laughs> I've got my, uh, my tape measure, about eight inches. For each side and that includes eh, it does not include the length of the uh the uh the wire guardian over here on the end but that is a good length for me for a necklace i prefer my necklaces on the shorter side when i do my weekly wrap up and chat i usually do a jewelry try on at that point so i'll show you how this fits on my neck tomorrow during my weekly wrap up if you'd like to catch up and watch that but i am going to pull out my wire guardian here and i've got a couple of jump rings and a lobster clasp but i'm going to be using those i'm also going to show you in just a minute how this works and fits on this silver silk pipe chain that i had in my stash and also I'll put a link in the description where you can get this um, because I think it's just perfect together. And I just wanted to show you what, how that looks and uh, how to finish that. So we'll get to that after I show you how to finish this. But for now, where I'm at and where I ended with my needle coming right out of the, the work is I finished my last daisy and I have my thread coming out of the same, uh, bead that I would normally do right before I added the petal section or the diamond section. So what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be doing another diamond section, but instead of adding another petal bead, I'm going to go through my wire guardian and I'm still going to pop out that third bead on each side to give it that, that same shape to keep it cohesive. So let's do that together. So I'm coming out of my daisy. I'm going to pick up three of my leaf color beads and then I'm going to go through one leg of the wire guardian and a wire guardian it has two legs and then kind of an open bit over here where the thread can sit so I'm going to go through one leg of the wire guardian and what this does is it protects your thread from rubbing against like the jump rings and that sort of thing and and prevents the wear from from getting too great on that part so it's a really good thing to have when you're doing bead weaving i usually don't use it for wire because the wire that i tend to use doesn't really um abrade very easily but thread definitely will 
So I like to, when I go through here, kind of pinch the sides of the wire guardian so that the thread goes and settles right there into that little valley. Because if you don't, sometimes you'll end up, and I'm just going to show you and demonstrate it, with the thread outside of it like that, which can be kind of a pain to have to move back into place. But if you pinch the sides of it, it'll settle pretty well into there. So I went up through that one leg over the top and then down through the second leg. And I'm coming out of that second leg of the wire guardian. I'm gonna pick up another three beads and then go back into that petal bead that I was coming out of, that one petal bead. All right, so now I'm going to go back through all of this one more time, but on my second pass, I'm gonna skip that middle green bead, that middle leaf bead, so that it pops out like the other ones do. So I'm going to sew through the first leaf bead, skip the second, sew through the third, and then go up through that first leg of the wire guardian. I'm going to give it just a gentle tug, just to help that bead kind of pop out and pop into place. Then we go up over the top, go back down through, and I'm pinching the wire guardian to make sure my thread stays where I need it to be, through that leg. Now I'm only sewing through that first bead right now because I want to keep this um, thread where I want it, instead of trying to like finagle my needle around this Bead that I'm skipping and into the next one. So now I could just sew right into that next bead, that last one, and then back into this petal bead. And then from here, once I get this gentle. And one of the reasons that you want to be gentle with these wire guardians is sometimes the threads can pop out if you pull too tight um, because these aren't closed all the way on these sides. They're not. <laughs> All right, so that is my wire guardian attached. And now I'm going to go back down through my beads, away from the end, find a place to tie off. Yikes. And when I had to add thread, this is what I did to end my thread, is I just went back down through the work, followed some thread paths. I continued skipping these outside beads on the, the leaves, and then found a little spot that I thought might be a good place to tie a little half hitch knot by going under that thread. So there's a little loop there. And going through the loop, I'm pulling that taut right there. It's just a little half hitch knot. And then I can go back through my thread path a little ways, tie another knot a little further down here, go down a little bit further. That's just making sure that the thread is secure and that it's not going to come out or fall apart on me. All right, that was just another half hitch knot that I tied right there. And I'm going to go through these beads. Alright, I can cut my thread, I'll burn down my end later, but right now, also when I um, added more thread, and I added more thread about here, that's where I added more thread, um, and both, both sides, that's about where I added more thread. Um, when I did that, I also took the time to weave in the thread that was here at the beginning 
and burned out that end. So we already did that. So let's go over here to the ends. Let's attach our jump rings and our clasp. And then this necklace is done. And I'll make a show you how I did this second necklace with the pipe chain because that's that may be easier for you and you don't have to do a chain like this with that pendant I just thought it would look super cute so I decided to do a daisy chain you could do um like a brush and spiral if you want you could do um a uh what is it called? Spiral stitch cord. You could do all sorts of, there are options, but um, I'm not showing those in this video. I'm just showing my little daisy chain because I think it looks super cute with it. All right, and I'm just opening and closing my jump rings. Just swing them open, swing them closed. There we go. And that necklace is done. And just as a reference, here's the earrings that we made in the other video. Let me go with it like that. And then this is the other one that I made in order to demonstrate making a bail with the ladder stitch. Remember I did seven of these and the seven rows fit perfectly on this pipe chain. And now pipe chain is from Silver Silk and more. Um, this one has a brown rubber tube with some green wire knitted around it. There are other pipe chains that have different color combinations but it's one of my favorite um, mediums for making jewelry with. I love Silver Silk products. And so when I was making this and I made that decision on the fly to make it big enough for this, I thought that was a really good, really good plan on my part. There we go. And there we go. It fits. It fits pretty well um, if you're not all thumbs. And so to finish this necklace, I mean, pretty much the pipe chain does it all for me. I'm using some silver silk findings. These are cord ends. Usually use, use them for capture chain, but you can use them for pipe chain as well. Because the um, tubing is hollow, Often, to turn it into a necklace, you'll just put some beading wire through it and then put a little cap on the end and then attach things that way. But you can use these, so you don't have to use beading wire. You don't have to use um, some of those other things. Let me find... There it is. Yeah, you don't have to use beading wire or to do it. You don't have to use craft wire. Um, it was great on memory wire. But basically, the inside of this has a little lip on the inside and it clamps on, it crimps on. So I'm just going to widen it a little bit more than the way it came so that I can fit this in here before we crimp it down. And I just use my pliers by wedging this in here and then spreading it with my fingers leverage physics. So I'm just going to pinch the sides a little bit to keep the ends of these wires from like going everywhere. And I'm just going to push this in as far as it can go. And then use my fingernail to kind of smooth these wires inside of here. Smoothing those wires. And now I can use some pliers to squeeze this closed, to 
crimp that down. And I've got a loop on the ends of my chain. Here's a little close-up so you can see how great, how great this looks with, <laughs> with this. Like, I didn't even plan this when I was uh, making this white daisy. I was just like, oh, I love the green on this. And then I just realized when I was doing it that I had some pipe chain with that same green and <laughs> just how great it looks. So then I can do the same thing on this end where I've got my loops. I can put on a lobster clasp and then I have a necklace. So that's both of my little versions of my necklace. Uh, if you choose to do this, you can again put it on anything, leather cord, um, a chain, any of those other things, you can make your own little chain with some daisies or any other cord or chain stitch that you know. But uh, I hope if you do this, let me know. I hope you enjoy stitching them and I will talk with you later. Have a happy weekend and happy beading.